What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of JuiceCast, a podcast made for resellers by resellers. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Saucy Mango. What's up, bro? Hey, bro. How's it going? It's nice to be here. I'm happy to uh, be starting this podcast with you and get this thing going. Uh, I think we should uh, get our listeners a little more integrated with our lives and see uh, who we are, what we're about, and what we do from a day-to-day basis. So, uh, DTX, I'll let you start us off. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, bro. So, um, I've been kind of like, you know, uh, a younger entrepreneur for a little while. Uh, I started off with drop shipping and making beats and selling them. Uh, that went well so i was able to start sneaker reselling i only started with 200 dollars. that's all i put in the sneaker reselling i was like okay where can this get me um i was able to secure a few pairs and eventually grow my capital right now uh i'm trying to grow my social media so right now on instagram i have 2.1k followers and then on twitter i have like 60 so if you have twitter go follow me that'll be in the link in description um a little bit more about my personal life i i'm in school and i uh play basketball and uh, I mostly right now with COVID and everything, I'm focusing a lot on reselling. That's dope, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy how far we've come. For those of you listening right now, um, DTX and I actually met just over a year ago, and we've been working ever since. I myself, I'm Saucy Mango. I'm currently in university, and my passion started for sneakers since I was a since I was a young kid, man. Uh, I've been in love with the game of basketball and, and the culture and all of that. Been doing a lot of projects that that uh, involve sneakers and all that. I, I, I'll be posting some cool pictures in the near future of uh, this artwork that I did when I was younger. Essentially, I don't know if you guys have heard of like this artist named Freehand Profit, but essentially what he does for our, our sneaker lovers out there, it's a little sad to hear, but he basically breaks down sneakers down to the T and turns it into real life sculptures and i've done something similar like that but anyways i uh decided to enter this game seriously over the summer when uh you know unfortunately we had to deal with covid19 and i guess that sparked my idea to really take this seriously um reselling has been growing and is continuing to grow at a drastic rate and it's amazing to see how many young guns we got in the industry today. Um, but yeah, I think it is it is something that I recommend for anyone to do. And when we take you along our podcast these uh, next couple of weeks, as you guys get to know us a little better, you'll hear a little more inside stories about um, why it is impactful, what you can do, and, and, and I guess like turn this passion into something useful on your day-to-day adventures. Um, but yeah, DTX, do you want to talk a little about, let's start off about how COVID-19 has really impacted our lives in terms of the sneaker game and how it's brought us to where we are today as resellers and entrepreneurs. Yeah. um, So for starters, um, you know, a lot of backdoors and stuff like that have been delayed because of COVID-19. That's something that I've experienced personally. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of uh, in-store pairs that I was supposed to receive, for example, a recent release we have coming up, the Top Haze 4s, I was supposed to get that last week uh, earlier than mm-hmm. release date, and COVID shipping messed it up. Then I'm in Texas, I live in Texas, um, the warehouses kind of went into some issues, there was some flooding or something like that, and they ended up canceling it. So, you know, that obviously affects me, that affects my clients. Uh, they weren't able to get their pairs. And that, that half of it's weather, granted, granted, but um, the other half is COVID. That's just like one thing that, you know, it's played a role in. Um, I think that a lot of clients, especially in reselling, are starting to save their money more with COVID-19. You know, your, your job is uncertain. You don't know if you're going to have, you know, for some jobs, you don't know if you're going to have it the next day. So it's, you know, good maybe not to spend too much money on, sneakers and personals and maybe save some of that money so that's definitely had an impact on us resellers yeah for uh, sure so um, i don't know about what like what's been the impact for you up in canada um i mean i think similar to the u.s i think based on how much stock we get i mean for those of you canadian listeners out there and 
and those in the EU, we, 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 I feel your pain with, with, you know, how much stock the U.S. gets compared to us. But, I mean, we face a similar issue in terms of delays and, and so on. But I think it's, it's more so, um, like you said, budgeting was the biggest, biggest lesson as a reseller that we really had to discipline ourselves. I remember you were talking about how, you know, especially starting off, whether it's just manually um, trying to get sneakers and that's its own issue in itself, but even botting as well, there's a lot of operational expenses that go into it. And you find a lot of these inexperienced people putting themselves down a big drain. And that is something that we failed to address. And I guess like inform a lot of our, you know, new up and comers in the scene. What do you, what do you think about that? You know, um, I think you're hundred percent correct. And that's why whenever people go into reselling with capital, I'm like, don't only stick to shoes, you know, stick to maybe some random flips, um, like Funkos or like vinyl. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kind of on a side note, this podcast is powered by juice dio which like you know they've done an incredible job with random phenomenal flips. job man yeah yeah with the random resell and you know i haven't been in the server for a long time but you know it's it's insanely profitable how much these random flips are so whenever you're going to reselling i don't recommend that you just go only shoes don't keep that mentality the first thing i ever sold when i started reselling i think was a nintendo ring fit you, you can even go on my instagram that's the first post i have if it's still there um and that's you know, that's the first profit I made. It cost me like, I think 60 bucks or something like that. And I sold it for 90, you know, and I made $30 and I was able to afford my first like Jordan one pair and that I got lucky with, um, filled out someone's ACO form and yeah, it's just, you know, growing your capital. So like you said, ma- going for manual pairs is super difficult. I don't recommend it. I mean, it's just a waste of your time at that point, unless it's like sneakers app or something like that, yeah, or unless yeah. it's like, you know, like the Jubilees, for example, people are hitting that manual on foot sides. But um, unless it's something like that, don't go for manual. Spend your time and money elsewhere. Build your capital. And then eventually you can get into botting. You can, like, you know, join a cook group like Juiced, IO. And like that's how you can, like, you know, grow your portfolio, basically. Yeah, no doubt. I think the importance of cook groups and all that is really what's going to take your what's really going to elevate your game to the next level i think you know with i think the the biggest thing that i've learned in terms of being a part of group a cook group when i first started was all the tools they have available to you i know it's very overwhelming when you know you for me at least i've never been part of a discord server when i first started off and then hopping onto this new platform was was a different experience and tough to grasp at, at the at the beginning but i think you really have to take advantage of reading through the guides and reading what's available to you uh, juiced.io has a phenomenal interface and organization of all their channels and what's available to you to become a really good reseller and like you said i think that's a really important point i just about not necessarily just sticking to sneakers i know that we all love sneakers and the hype around it, and even Supreme and all that stuff. But the profit and the jump you make from the start is from those small little profits here and there growing exponentially. Um, but like I said, back to Juiced.io, their monitors are something that you really have to take advantage of um, and their support. I think having sort of a mentor, but also people who are, you know, really just supportive over there who take care of your botting needs, you know, give you advice in like, in terms of like flipping things and all that, that's something that you can't get in the outside world. That's, and you know, for how much you pay for, like it is definitely worth it and you will never regret it. And it's not like you're paying for like a long time, right? Like it is based on your budget. You can leave or enter the server for as long as you want, but Chances are, once you pay that small little subscription and you join Juice, you'll be making that in no time, you know? Like, I think that's the biggest thing that people really have to take advantage of. And it's really down to, like, how much are you willing to lose, right? We have, you know, a certain amount of budget we set ourselves every day for whether maybe lunch money, food, transportation, wherever we're going or whatever it may be. And... Some days, I'm sure we could definitely set that money aside here and there for something like Juiced and then maybe take our information and knowledge to the next level. 
Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, you know, it's a small fee to pay for success. That's that's the way I look at it with anything, whether it be bots, whether it be um, cook groups, whether it be like anything, you know, like that's helping you make money. Um, but yeah, uh, that's like kind of an introduction on ourselves as we did earlier and kind of like what Saucy Mango said earlier was the effect COVID has had on reselling has been ginormous. I mean, like there's, it's been overwhelming at times too, where, you know, you you think this pair is going to release and you prepare and, you know, some people put a lot of money into bot rentals and then it gets delayed. It's like, you know, due to COVID, you know, a lot of these delays that have happened are due to COVID. And then once it gets delayed, you're like, what, what do I do now? You know, I spent this much money on bot rentals. I spent this much money on, you know, proxies that are going to expire, you know, well, some proxies expire and that's just, you think money down the drain. How can you, you know, use that bot rental you rented for that drop, you know, whether it be a month or a week and, you know, profit off of these like more low key drops, like, you know, things on um, like Kith Mondays, you know, those can be profitable a lot of the time. You know, I, I've, I've made some good profit off of that and just go for drops that, you know, not everyone is going to go for. And that's just the way, like, ten dollars is ten dollars you can continuously you know that's just the way you're going to grow your capital is yeah. every single dollar you make counts yeah for sure for sure i think also um you made a really good point is you know the platforms that we use to sell things and our connections those play a really pivotal role and when you engage yourself in these communities and you know, the one thing that I really like about our community in terms of like reselling and the sneaker platform is that a lot of people you'll find are pretty genuine and looking to sort of grow with each other. I think, you know, you get a really good family feel um, being part of these groups and you learn from each other's mistakes, you grow. But I think the biggest and I guess, you know, important thing for us to consider is taking the L like I think our ability to bounce back from like failure is really crucial I think simply taking a loss on on you know a really big hype release isn't supposed to set us back you know and sometimes you might be in the deficits in terms of profit but it's it's your ability to sort of bounce back from that and realizing that you know whatever you were going for isn't your sole and only I guess like way of getting um, you know, your returns, there's so many options available to you out there. And it's just a matter of doing your research. And myself, I'm sure like DTX can say the same thing is, you know, um, we're pretty like much like self taught, you know, a lot of it is what you put in is what you get out. I think the more you're willing to immerse yourself in this community and this game and this industry, the more and more you'll be able to um, succeed. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think like, yeah, like you said, I'm self-taught in, in reselling. You know, I had, I really didn't have anyone to kind of guide me through it. You know, there was some people that were there to like kind of tell me like, you know, the basic like vocabulary at some point is like WTS means once I sell like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a community like, you know, what Juiced has. I didn't have that with me at that time. And I just had to kind of like learn by myself, learn like, okay, I'm not gonna lie. The first deal I did, um, I I almost flaked on, and I I was like, I didn't know that was bad. I was like, dude, I'm getting a better price somewhere else. My bad. It's like, then I learned like you don't do that. I ended up buying them for the higher price. I was like, you know, that's just good business. Now that person has been one of the you know one of my main clients recently. You know, it's just something that's really important in reselling. And if I were to give a new reseller some advice would be build connections connections are the most important thing you're going to make in this mm -hmm. game For right sure. it's people that you talked to back in july of last year can come like can come really clutch tomorrow whenever you're starting to maybe start something new or you know you want to sell something and you made that connection back in july they followed you on instagram they followed you on twitter you know sell something they're the ones that end up buying it from you right so and you see that all the time you see these connections that like you know i met saucy mango for example um like you said around a year ago i didn't really talk to him much around that time and then we started like talking a lot more around like i'd say four to five months ago like at that time i had no idea you know that it would turn into um you know a friendship at that at that moment you know it's just 
and even in the months you know after that i was like okay this is some canadian reseller nothing special right you know it nothing special eh? (laughs) it's like you know it's like uh it's like just the way that you want to network yourself and just meet a bunch of people you know everyone one thing i always tell new resellers is get a business card right everywhere you go yeah give the person your business card that's the way that you're going to network and grow your brand the end of the day it's a brand and you want to grow you want to grow it as big as you can and um that's just the way you're going to resell stuff more that's just the way you're going to get a bigger clientele and uh yeah i know about you but what what's what's been the biggest thing for you to like help you network yeah to build off what you just said i think connections are the most important thing and one of the things i've learned in terms of building your brand building who you are is one references right you have whether you're on instagram and you know i never was a big user in terms of twitter in the past but twitter is really really influential in our industry you have all of these big companies these developers and people who play a pivotal role in our industry who all use twitter and like i said in order to build trust and build a good partnership with whatever business person you are working with it's building your references, you know, and all it takes is, you know, you finish a transaction with someone and and you link them to your Twitter or your Instagram or whatever it may be. And you just ask them to leave us a little small comment and you do the same thing for them as well. And they'll really appreciate that. And and that takes you a long way, wouldn't you say? 100%. Yeah. Every little thing counts. Um, And for you, like, you know, you're in uni, like what's that like? Do you, um, I know with COVID, it's been a little hard, but do you find that like maybe even like networking on campus, stuff like that helps? Well, actually, it's funny you bring that up. Right now, I'm actually working remotely. I'm at home. I'm not even on campus. Um, but I'd say, you know, it has its pros and cons, but I think in, in some regards, COVID has has been a blessing in disguise in terms of my motivation and my transition into pursuing something other than just my academia. And, you know, obviously we play sports and basketball, but also just from an entrepreneurial standpoint, right? Um, With the ability to work from home and not have to worry about, you know, jumping from class to class and, and being on campus, it's given me a little more freedom and liberty to work on my business at home and and work out some more free time for myself. I think that's been something I've been appreciative of. And, you know, this transition of going back to normal in, in the near future is going to be interesting. I'm excited for, you know, what the future holds for us in terms of integrating ourselves back into that that way of life and now continuing my endeavors, you know? 100%. And, um, Something that I've started recently is like going more into software development and, you know, it's completely new, but like I'd said earlier, like, thank God I'd made connections earlier this year. You know, a lot of the connections I made or or not earlier this year, like last year, 2020, a lot of the connections I made then, um, you know, are helping me right now come up with like ideas for this new software and ways that I can implement and like, you know, make my dreams come into a reality almost. Right. And you know, there are just the sneaker community is really toxic sometimes, but it's also extremely, extremely supportive. Like it's, it's incredible how much like, you know, people in the community will help you on like just Twitter or they'll come onto a discord call with you and like tell you what to do or like do one-on-one like, you know, drops, like um, reviewing your setup for an upcoming drop with you. And they're just doing it like, you know, for free out the, you know, just, because they're so kind like that's just what i found in this community is that like yeah granted there's a lot of people that are toxic and there's a lot of like you know these what well, well, i call them are the mickey mouse resellers right <laughs> um but if you really look hard enough there's like a lot more good than there is bad when, when you agree absolutely absolutely you mentioned mickey mouse resellers it's kind of funny but i think that addresses an all together another issue that we should really usually bring to everyone's attention. And that's like scammers in our industry. Scammers, you know, I myself have faced, you know, I'm not ashamed to say I've faced the back end of of a scammer as well. And 
it's not it's not a great feeling but i think my point earlier where i said references and building that that trust is really important and when you're doing business with others it's important to check their references as well right because you they owe that to you just as much as you owe that to them um but anyways i want to talk a little bit about your your software you were talking about i think it really yeah. brings to light this idea that when you're working in this industry, you don't just have to be a reseller. I know that we say that we're resellers, but we don't stop there. You know, our passion can translate into anything in this world. And I think that's something that's really important and that people have to realize today. Yeah, 100%. You know, I started off selling sneakers. I started off dropshipping, making beats. And like, you know, now I'm going into software development. Hopefully something comes out in June or July. Um, and of course, I'll talk about it more as we go through the pod. You'll, you'll really see it grow with me, you know, as we come on like every week and I'm going to talk about updates and like what's happening. Um, right now, we're just kind of in like we kind of just exited the brainstorming phase um, and we're going to start go- getting to work super soon. So uh, I'll keep you all updated. I'll keep all the listeners updated, but uh, look out for something. It's going to it's going to be really cool. Yeah, um, you guys have to check this out. Like it's going to be exciting, honestly. DTX, man, like. You have grown so much and shown how much, I guess, how many possibilities there are out there for people like us. And it's it's really admirable and inspirational. You know what I mean? Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. Same goes for you. You know, um, the first time I remember we were in, a, I think it was like a, some sneaker discord. And um, that's where we met. <laughs> yeah. And I remember you posted like, six off whites you know i remember what, what what shoe was it do you remember that was the, that, those were the sales the fours yeah yeah the that was big cook in the summer yeah and then like everyone's going crazy i remember people were posting his fours on like um on their instagram stories and that like the, they're acting like they're theirs you know i was like <laughs> this is crazy um but yeah that's where i first that's where i first met you and you know just to see like how much we've both grown from that point right I, I truly think that's just incredible. And, you know, the opportunities that have, you know, come with, I'd say with success, but I, I guess more with maturity, right? Because when I started reselling, it was, you know, um, I used to go crazy and like mess around a lot. I wasn't very mature. And as I've, you know, started to get more into it in these past few months and I guess past year almost, um, I've learned that, you know, it's all, it's all about being professional. And at the end of the day, it's a business. You know, I, I was running with like friends, local friends. And I was like, this isn't the way I should be doing it. I should be, you know, running this way more professionally, way more like a business. And that's, you know, back going back to what advice I'd give to a new reseller. It's treat this like, you know, you treat any other professional business. That's just the way it is. Um, Cause that, that is what it is. You know, it's, the sneaker industry is worth billions and millions of dollars. There's so much, you know, opportunities to get from the sneaker industry and so much, you know, profit and money to be made in the sneaker industry. Uh, I just don't think you should underestimate yourself or like your abilities in this. It's, you know, it's, it seems hard at first, but you know, once you start to get business rolling and that's what we're going to be helping you out with here as well on the podcast is once you start to get that business rolling, it just becomes easier and easier and it becomes really fun at some points right it's just like some people ask me what's the most fun thing you do outside of you know um sports or outside of like classes and all that i always say reselling reselling is the most fun thing i do and uh is is that the same for you as well yeah definitely i think because we've turned our passion into something useful um has really changed our outlook in, in in terms of reselling i think it no longer feels like a job it feels like you know, something that you can enjoy in, in your leisure time. Obviously, that doesn't mean you don't keep it professional and you don't stick to your, your business plan and your, your business outline, but it does mean that you get to have a little fun about it. Um, but I think even just staying disciplined, um, you mentioned earlier, like how, you know, when we're going for drops and we see some really, really cool items, like we're we're part of the hype now. We're we're entrenched into all these cool consumer goods that are dropping everywhere all over online. And you really have to realize that, you know, you have to separate that 
reseller and like being a consumer, right? When when I you know would go for shoes, there were moments at the beginning where like, man, I don't even feel like letting go of these. Like, I would rather keep them for myself. But I think you have to start to realize that you know what what you're really doing this for is it really to make profit or is it to attain exclusive items just for yourself? And I think that's what separates a, a good reseller from you know, someone who doesn't take it as seriously or who doesn't see it as a way of profiting or, or becoming successful um, within this industry. I was talking to someone about this, um, I'd say two days ago, and we we're talking about how much of a role do you think being like, you know, good in sales plays in reselling? Like just, you know, having that salesman mentality and like, you know, wanting to sell something to someone and, I feel like, you know, it. I feel like for me, I feel like I'm never like trying to convince someone to buy something they don't want to buy or like, you know, something like that. For me, it's just like I've built this clientele that I consider like, you know, friends of mine, right? Yeah. And I think like whenever I get something, I'm not trying to like, you know, convince them or like shove it down their throats. They're like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. I'm like, all right, I'll run you a deal because, you know, you're you've been with me for a while. I think that's the way you know, the sneaker community should be in a sense, right? It shouldn't be like, and I, I think that's where all the toxicity starts to come as well, where um, a lot of people just like get really angry really fast. Like, uh, like I'm, dude, you should see some of these people in my, in my Instagram DMs, man. It's really toxic. You know, they're like, there's one dude who's just like, uh, he said, you stop giving me steals. You're chasing a bag. I'm like, what? Like, you know, it's like these random people you've never heard of or like they're just coming into your DMs and they're like, oh, yeah, I thought we used to be close. I'm like, dude, I've never seen you in my life. Right. <laughs> it's just like these. It comes with a lot of like, I'd say when you start moving sales and you start doing higher volumes, it starts to come with a lot of fake people. Right. People that say, oh, I've been there since day one. Run me this. Oh, I've been there since, you know, since you started. Run me this. Yeah, and it's like you, you just have to learn that, you know, that's just not how like there's going to be a lot of people that just want to come and, you know, leech off of what you've done. Right. Do, do I make sense? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing that, you know, the biggest mix, misconception of resellers is that, you know, we're trying to take the most money out of you. But the reality is, is that, you know, it, it's obviously basic economics of the supply and demand and how you know, we basically work off of what consumers are willing to pay us. Um, but I think it's also just realizing that, you know, we're not just there to sell it to the first person who's willing to give us the highest price. It's also about, you know, finding people who are um, business minded and who are trustworthy, who will make a return um, for future transactions and, and looking for that relationship. I think it's more to us than just simply giving off a pair of shoes and then just taking your money. And I mean, there was a big cook earlier this year. You know, I remember we were talking about it uh, when the PS5 was coming out and you were really, really hype about it in terms of like profit. And I, I mean, I didn't cook that earlier in, uh, I mean, late 2020. So I was like, you know what? I, I, I don't feel like it. I don't think it's worth it. And I mean, that was, I guess, my negligence and my lack of information in terms of like the profitability for these consoles. But when I saw all these checkouts hitting and everyone started posting listings, I thought it was ridiculous how much people were charging. And then, you know, I had friends coming up to me and saying, well, you know, I just want a PS5. Like, why can't, why can't I just pay like a decent price? And I'm like, yeah. listen, it is insane that, you know, You'll have listings for, I remember I saw one, it was ridiculous. I think it was like two grand for a PS5. And I was like, that is insane. No one is going to buy that. But then you see people purchasing it for that amount. And I'm like, you guys are not helping, you know, other consumers for pricing. You just keep raising the bar and that forces resellers to go, okay, well, you know what? If people are selling it for this much, what's stopping me from, from holding that price, you know? And, and that's what's been, I guess, like really putting a, a negative connotation attached to us. But I think it it really boils down to that, you know? 100%. I, I agree. I mean, not even with shoes, like going back to like random flips, like 
don't know if you remember, but I think uh, I think it was Juice that actually called this one. Um, those that Ariana Grande. What was that in the last album name? I don't know. Oh, I don't that know the vinyl, name right? Yeah, that vinyl was going for like yeah. what hundred hundred five dollars. It's like <laughs> that's just crazy to think. Like I don't, I don't even think it was that limited. It may have been. I could be way way off, but like. That's just crazy to think that, you know, things like that are reselling, you know, um, Ariana Grande vinyl. I would have never thought in a million years, you know, that that'd be reselling that much. And it, that's just crazy to me. So that's just insane. Well, yeah, you're seeing now that, you know, trading cards and sports cards and Pokemon cards, Pokemon cards are taking off now. And be a top shot. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. You know, back in the day, we used to have that, but it wasn't as big. And now the reselling game and this like form of online arbitrage is just taking over, whether it's on Amazon or any sort of platform, everyone's trying to take advantage of it with being at home, being restricted from, you know, going outside, going to your local retailer and, and purchasing off them. Like the future is online, the future is in technology, and people are starting to realize that. 100%. I think NFTs are the next big thing, right? Um, things like NBA Top Shot, right? That's like the, probably the, one of the biggest NFTs right now. It's like, that's just like the fact that, you know, one of my one of my friends yesterday and the, um, he got a pack. Uh, shout out Ethan. Yeah, he got, he got a pack for $9, right? And uh, $9, right? That That's less than a lunch, right? Yeah. And pulled a 1.4k LeBron out of it. Are you serious? Yeah, that is ridiculous. That's that just ridiculous. so. I, granted, he can't withdraw it for like 30 days, but but uh, 1.4k, fourteen hundred dollars off of a nine dollar pack, right? Yeah. That's insane. That's why I always tell people, I'm like, look for everything. Man, Don't I remember just do sneakers. Yeah, no, you're right. I remember back in. I think it was either November or December. People, you know, there's there's their own community of, I guess, like coin collectors. And there was this big cook for um, for the U.S. mint coin. And I managed to get like a couple. And, you know, there were these coins. You're looking at them. They're on sale for like $80 or however much. And you're like, $80 for a coin. That's crazy. But yeah. then they sold for... What, how much was it just over a thousand dollars on ebay and people were profiting and there was like i guess like a partnered coin which was gold and it released for i think it was 2k and it was selling for upwards of twelve thousand dollars and i'm like man people are making money off anything these days and i think that's that's the biggest lesson i learned and it's just don't limit yourself really honestly don't limit yourself yeah like uh at least in the states may have been in canada too but at least in the states it was this past summer, the biggest thing was pools. Was that was that in Canada too? Pools. Oh, the ones like those was it with inflatable Home ones. Yeah, dude, those were crazy. I remember I got one at Target for like ninety six, and I was going crazy. I was like, dude, I just got that. I, that was actually the first thing I ever resold. Yeah, that it wasn't a ring fit. It was a pool. I remember it was like I just got into sneakers, and I was like, everyone in sneakers on Instagram was talking about pools, and it's like. You know, pools just made me this much. And I remember I went to Target to go see and I didn't find any. And then I went to another Target. And I found one and I, I bought it. For... I, remember, I remember that. Yeah. I remember you messaging me in my DMs and you're like, I got like 10 pools shipping out to my place. And I'm like, pools? Like, what are you doing with that? No, nah, dude, I didn't have so 10 much. pools. I had $200, man. <laughs> I didn't have I didn't have 10 pools. I, had, I, I wish. I, th I think later on I was able to get more pools. Because that, that's actually what helped me grow my capital. So you may be right. But um, the first thing I ever resold was a pool from Target I bought for $96. Sold it for $260. Um, and that was like, you know, that was the most profit I'd ever gotten from something. Because yeah, COVID, COVID was really working on your side there. Like you found all these, these consumer goods that were sort of like building your in-home yeah. gym or whatever it may be like weights pools stuff like that stuff that you'd usually go out in public to enjoy you know yeah weights, you had dude. to bring that to the comfort of your own home and those goods were taken off everyone was on a COVID-19 workout plan huh 
Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> Dude, that was just um, that that was crazy. I mean, just all these random flips and how profitable they are. It's just insane to me. But um, you know that this was kind of more of an introduction podcast. You know, it's episode one. You kind of got to know me and Saucy Mango a little bit. Kind of got to like, you know, this is the way that we're going to be doing this is natural conversations and you know bringing on guests kind of teaching like what we've learned and from reselling you know it's especially like to the newer resellers and like what's what can you do to like you know grow your capital what can you do to build your brand um and I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting some guests on here it's gonna it's gonna be really fun you know talking to them and how they've built their brands and their companies or whatever it may be and uh yeah i mean I'm I'm really looking forward to this. This is like I think this is going to be a really really fun podcast. Yeah, we're definitely going to be uh coming to you guys with some really good content. And you know, I think one thing I want to mention for you guys is we're um really really I guess like open people in terms of like social media. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're bringing this podcast to you guys to share inform and entertain um but that doesn't mean that you know we're not able to i guess converse with you guys and take your suggestions we have our social medias available and if it's so much as just saying hi to us or asking a question we'll be there and i'd love to hear from you guys love to hear you know what you'd be interested in us bringing to you guys in terms of content and whether it's in terms of like reselling questions or botting questions, all that, you can hit our socials. And and I mean, my at in, in Instagram and Twitter is, is Saucy Mango, um, just as it sounds. And I'm sure, you know, DTX, if you want to leave your at for everyone out there who's listening so they can reach out to you whenever. Yeah. So um, if you want to reach out to me on Discord, I'm going to leave that in the link in the description. Um, if you're in juiced io already you'll see us on the side under podcast i'm dtx podcast just shoot me a dm my dms are always open uh mine and saucy mango's twitter is going to be in the link in description as well so just tweet at us say what's up um ask us any questions if you have any uh give us suggestions for the podcast and um yeah that's really it I'm, i'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do with this and how we can grow into something really special because i think it has a lot of potential and um yeah that's that's really all. Anything else you want to add? Thank you guys again for listening, and it means a lot to DTX and I. Until next time, peace. <laughs>